Hey, it's Joy, and today we're watching The Dragon Prince, Season 6, Episode 3, The Frozen Ship. Very excited for another episode, a reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon two weeks in advance. The only version one week in advance, and let's go. Oh lord. Have I missed something? One spell. One. Oh. I had to. Mm -hmm. That's the image that Netflix shows. So maybe it's just his fears, right? Tame for the treacherous, perilous hardship part. Oh yay! So this is it. to spread our weight. I don't think they're spreading their weight by walking in a line. I know you're widow, but maybe you should walk with me just to even out the weight a little bit. I was gonna say. Volcano spell? That. Do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank goodness. Now we need to keep moving and spread out across the this ice. This place isn't for you. Yeah. You've. He's the man who can't be moved. The policeman said, son, you can't sit here. There's someone I'm waiting for, but it's a day, a month, a year. I've got to stand my ground. It's going to be rain or snow. So if she changes her mind, this will be the first place that she goes. That's black ice. Oh, is it enchanted with dark magic? No, uh, super slippy. No, no, it's just, it's just over dramatically. Yeah! Mm -hmm. So heroic. <laughs> That was different. Bless. She did come back. Okay. Terry, you're a fool. It is indeed. How long Looks do you think it's been here? Quite frightening. No I would keep moving. A couple centuries, maybe? No telling how unstable the ship is after so many years in the elements. Yeah, like, I think this is a good call to just keep I'm moving. I don't like this. This ship is going nowhere. Think about when this ship first became a thing. People were so excited <laughs> about this ship. It was probably some people's favorite ship. <laughs> They probably dreamed and imagined the ship would go <laughs> He's not talking about the ship, is he? You could sit here and draw pictures of the ship, but does that change anything? <laughs> I feel like maybe we shouldn't be reading it. <laughs> oh. The one thing left which I desire. Love. Someone to look after you. You don't deserve Terry, Claudia, with the choices you've made. You need to start making better choices. It's already too late, but you need to start. I find what I most deeply desire is what I could have had all along. A love. Mm-hmm. Dear Conrad. Is Rayla crying? Rayla, I'm coming! Oh, Conrad, sweetheart. You were, here, I you were crying! I thought something was wrong. Nothing was wrong. Or something's about to be wrong at night on this boat or something. And it's Look, she may be stuck, but she's still a good ship. Oh, Callum. No punch in the boat. Hmm. You know you can just detangle. That is a thing. I always use a pile of loose planks as a blanket. Hey, I invented a blanket. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna don't really appreciate that. Why don't you just share my blanket with me? And also, why are we putting the pearl on the other side of it's the room? It's not really that big a deal. Without light. Those are absolutely the softest, most lovely <laughs> words I've ever heard. He said it made him appreciate every breath and every moment. He's never shared this with My her. My mom said he was the strongest person she ever knew. Thank you, Callum. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with me. Yeah. Get under the blanket, boy. Night. <laughs> they are all of us. Why am I 
quite concerned. Oh my god, are they just scheming to try and get them? Is this like the parent trap? <laughs> I love them so much. It's nice. Good. Yeah. I have to tell you something. Oh. He needed to tell her. He was making her a leg brace. And not a brace. You know what I mean. You don't deserve this level of love and devotion, Claudia. You could. And you could have in the past, but the person you've become... Learn from his goodness. Yes. I think these have been even more powerful, these moments we've seen between them. Because there has been... No language, no speaking, no words. Just two people that care about each other deeply and as much as I don't care about their ship particularly because Claudia has done so many evil things and I don't understand why Terry is still with her but it's still quite beautiful to watch and I'm intrigued with where Claudia is going next I'm ruined it's too late for me who cares it's not too no, late it's for you if not. you quit I... I would do anything for you <laughs> And I love as well because once upon a time she would have been disgusted with him for using dark magic and furious and not wanting to speak with him, but instead she's just so solely focused on what it's gonna do to him to use it. Am I supposed to have to choose between me and the greater good? Do the right thing. Make the sacrifice. Oh dear. Are we literally about to be put into the position of her or the greater good? Because no thank you. You're a mage! Time to go. Did they seriously forget the pearl? Which, to be fair, if nobody knows where they randomly lost it... But it'd be hard to find the pearl. Thank goodness. Just because this ship is sinking and going down in flames doesn't mean your ship has to, okay? We can instead take that as a sign that progress has been made. Something has changed. If Erevos ever controls me again, if he uses me, promise me you'll kill me. Only if there's no other option. I promise. She'd do it for you. Because she'd know you didn't want that. But if there was a way to save you, we'd all choose that way, so... That boring guard shift just got a bit more interesting. Stop. You deserve prison. Are you begging for mercy? Uh, no. Good. You don't deserve any. He doesn't. The level of things he's done doesn't deserve mercy. And almost like I think we should be able to give him justice, but I also think he should maybe be given to the Sun Elves. Like, not, I don't believe in capital punishment, but they should be the ones to imprison him. Now, obviously, they are barely surviving right now, so maybe they might want Catullus to actually do the imprisoning, but it should be, like, their decision, because the greatest crime he committed was against them. Um, okay, another brilliant episode. Oh, I just... Obviously, this one wasn't quite as light-hearted as the previous one, but I feel like it was just also another lovely episode of just connecting with these characters and where they're at right now. And I really enjoyed it. It's almost been like we've had this breather between all of the high stakes of what's to come. I mean, we're, we've watched a third of this show now, a third of this season, and I'm sure there are going to be dramatic Aravos shenanigans on what not to come. But we got to just really check in with the characters. And I really enjoyed the fact that Claudia and Terry's scenes were silent. Um, it added another layer to them and made them really beautiful. And I am someone who I don't particularly care about them. Now, I think if Claudia were to say, I've realised... I followed my dad down a dark path and I regret everything I did and I want to try and work for good from now on and I'm going to redeem myself. I could support her. If that was the path she was going to take, I could potentially support her. It would be like she'd have to 
prove with her actions that they matched her words but I could be like okay I understand that Terry always saw this girl within her and like I believe in her but if she does what I suspect and continues down the Aravos path then I just don't care about them because as much as I think oh it's nice that she's got someone that cares about her it's also like Terry seems like a good and sweet person and yet he's with someone that he knows is a murderer who will continue to murder because she views whatever she wants as being worth murdering thousands of people if need be so it was an interesting dynamic between them but this was a particularly sweet romantic moment of just she let someone help her and she let someone else be there for her and trusted that he would still be there and he was still there like he promised um I have no idea where, I mean, I have no idea where Claudia's going to go. I'm assuming it's going to be back to being Aravos' loyal servant. But I don't know, and I don't know in what form that will take as well. So that's going to be very interesting. Now, Viren turning up, begging for, I've changed. And I'm glad when he was like, you want mercy? And he was like, no. Good, because you don't deserve it. Because he doesn't. Like, I don't think he deserves, like, an axe to the head. I don't believe in capital punishment. But I do believe he should probably definitely spend the rest of his life in prison for what he has done. Um... And that would be far worse than being killed regardless. Uh, maybe also any information he does have on Aravos, he could give to us. And obviously they'd then have to verify it or at least treat it with a grain of salt. Because like, what if he's lying to us as some master Aravos plan? But definitely it's good, I guess, to see that he's doing what he said he was going to do. And we'll see what happens next. I'm assuming at some point Soren and Zim and Corvus etc will return because she and um, Zubaya told Zim to go back to his brother Ezran so that's another thing of Soren facing his father after everything um I really hope we get to see something there I mean, we've had a few mentions of Soren's mother but I think it would be very interesting to see how Viren is with Soren after how awful he has been um Soren doesn't deserve to have to deal with this but I think Oh, no, Soren doesn't deserve to have to deal with him, but I do also think that maybe he does deserve some closure from dealing with his father, if that makes sense. He doesn't deserve the pain, but he does deserve the process. Um, then we have Callum and Rayla, and I definitely feel like they were talking about how the ship, the frozen ship, and how like fans were really excited for them to get together, and then they've kind of just been like floating around, the, both in love with each other, but not actually doing anything with it. Very funny. Um, and the fact that Sneasels and... I always, my brain fog, forget the little monkey's name, that they were, like, trying to, I mean, they weren't parent trapping because they didn't, like, swap identities or whatever, but they were parent trapping them to get them together, like, making him put his arm around her and, like, are they going to kiss? And then, you know, I do really respect Callum because he could have so easily in that moment just done what he wanted and what they both wanted, like, he wouldn't have been taking advantage of her, but he could have easily kissed her and they could have been like, oh, I love you, let's be together, and he never needed to tell her I use dark magic again. Obviously, if he then began to use it frequently, that would become more of a problem. But he could very easily just never tell her that he used it that second time. But the fact that when he realised they were going to escalate their relationship, that it was going to reach that point, he didn't want to do it while keeping this huge secret from her. And I really, really respect him for that. Because you could almost think, understand the rationing, rationality of, well, I'm never going to use it again. And doesn't I'm fine. She doesn't need to know. And still proceed anyway. Um, so I really respect him for that and it makes me happy like, she wasn't that upset that he had used it she was mostly upset about the danger it put Callum in and that I just love them so much and then her making him promise to never choose the great her over the greater good and him making her promise to kill him those are horrible kind of promises that I don't like because I'm terrified that at some point the show is going to make them come to a place where they have to act on those promises and I don't like it um because that is the the danger with something like dark magic, um, black magic or whatever, that you can fall into it by doing good. I mean, one of the first big dark magic things Claudia did was saving Soren and protecting her brother. That was the first like huge sacrifice. But she had also been using it quite willy, willfully to just like, I'm going to track someone, crush the creature. Like she was very casually into it. But I think you can understand the impulse of well i could save my brother i could save the person i love i could save that innocent kid over there if i just do this dark magic and maybe you can even say well you know that bug versus that kid that's an easy sacrifice but it's a slippery slope and once you start acknowledging the small things the other things become more and more acceptable to you and you lose yourself and there's the added arrow thing and i am very very worried about 
what Arabos is planning because we have not seen him. We only saw him weeping, and I don't even know if that weeping was some kind of flash forward, though I hope not because that would mean he escapes, or some kind of flash back, or like him in a different part of his prison weeping because his plan failed. Like, I don't know, but we haven't seen what he is up to, and that frightens me because I don't think he's the sort of person to just admit defeat. He will be scheming, and that terrifies me. But Kayla, Kayla. Callum and Rayla, <laughs> um, I have no idea what their ship name is, they are so sweet and they care about each other so very deeply and they know each other so well. Like when he was sharing with her about his birth father, that was so beautiful because you can just know that's not something he talks about easily and he does have a love, or he did have a lovely relationship with the king, it wasn't like he had a horrible stepdad or anything. And he doesn't didn't really know his biological dad, but he's able to talk about him with such love and share him. And he memorized his poems. It's just so sweet. I really, really enjoyed them in this episode. And I feel like we've had a couple of episodes of like breathing room with these characters. And I'm very concerned that that's not going to last. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my Patreon two weeks in advance, the edited version one week in advance. And thank you so much for watching.